That look good? Yummy. The things that remind us of being a kid and take us back to being in Mama's kitchen. Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Colored Valley Cooks. Um, I am going to make something very simple and that is potato soup. So when I cut my potatoes for potato soup, this is a really small one, but I usually cut up a couple per person if they're smaller or, a, you know, a medium size per person at least. And when they're like this, I cut them in a, I cut them down the middle and down the middle again so that there's four pieces. And then I cut them pretty small for potato soup. And I only boil them for about 10 minutes. I put the lid on them and bring them to a boil really quick. This actually had cornbread in it the other day. We're going to make it real. Wipe it out and use it. Wipe it out and use it. Why not? So we're going to just brown up a little bit of bacon to go in our potato soup. Our potatoes are going to boil about 10 minutes. I'm making the bacon mainly because I don't have a potato soup recipe that has all the fixings in it. My potato soup online, and it's done really well on YouTube, is just plain old potato soup. And that's exactly what it says it is, and that's exactly what it is. So, um, some people are a little disappointed because I don't spruce it up. I told them it, it wasn't called a potato soup on steroids. <laughs> what I'm gonna do, we're going to get a mason jar, okay? And I'll show you how I keep my lids in my drawer in case you're interested. A lot of y'all already know, but I'm going to show you because it's convenient, okay? So I keep my lids for my mason jar in these little containers that you can get at Dollar General for like $1, okay? And so they fit in there pretty good, you can see. And, um... I keep the lids kind of at a sideways mark so that I can just reach in and get one. And then I can put a ring on the top of it. I have different kinds of rings and stuff for different things that I do. But we're going to mix up our thickening agent in a jar and it just it's just easier. I get out some half and half. Get the flour, okay? I'm going to put it in the jar. And the good thing about ball jars is they actually have measurements on the side of them. So like if I want to put, I'm going to fill it up to like the one cup mark with my half and half. Now if you don't have half and half and you buy whole milk, by all means use it. Mama never had, uh, we always had whole milk, but uh, we don't drink whole milk in this house. Not really. I actually think I'm going to put a cup and a half since I've got more people here and I'm making a bigger batch today. You always want to use cold ingredients when you mix in cornstarch or flour. Uh, you also want to use a cold wash rag when you wipe it off the counter because it just comes right up and does a really good job. Okay, so we're going to shake this up. So you've got a cup and a half of half and half and you've got a quarter cup of flour. For some reason, our soup doesn't get as thick as we want it. We can always add more, always, okay? When you cut your potatoes up, try to make them a little bit small so that when you get them in your spoon, you can put them in your mouth, okay? You don't want them too big. And it's okay if you make a couple too big because you can stir them up a little bit. They can, they can actually thicken the soup a little bit as well, but I like to add the cream. Soon to begin with, and I'm going to put a teaspoon of salt in here. And I'm going to put a half a teaspoon of pepper in here. Okay? And you got to be careful because you don't want to beat your potatoes up too much. I'm just going to barely stir it a little bit. Now that it's starting to boil, we're going to add our thickening agent. And I'm going to shake it one more time just in case some of the flour flooded to the top and didn't get in there good. It's a lot easier to shake it in a jar than to use a whisk and try to get every single little tiny piece of flour uh, 
melt it into that. That's how you thicken anything. You can thicken your roasts. You can thicken your soups. Um, you know, for that good biscuit sopping stuff. And I've still got a few little flour uh, pieces on the top, but they'll they'll melt down in there, and it'll be good. So this is going to start getting thick really quick. I'm going to take a spoon, and I'm going to taste it to see if it's salty enough. Oh, it's good. But it needs just a little bit more salt. I'm going to put another half teaspoon in here. Oh, and you know what we forgot to put in here, which is one of the most important ingredients? Butter. All right. The potatoes are already done, so we don't have to just, you know, boil it anymore, really. I'm going to put at least a half a stick of butter in here, y'all. And one to grow on. How's that? Half a stick of butter and one to grow on. That looks good to me. If your granny or mama or papa had these, but these are really old bowls. You remember these? I know my mama and papa had these on their table. And um, I remember, because when she cooked for us when we were little, she would always make us tea cakes. And she'd make chocolate ice and put in between them and give them to us for dessert. And Mama and Papa had a sugar dish like this on the table and a creamer dish. I'm going to tell y'all a funny story right quick, and then we're going to make a bowl of soup. Because that's one thing, you know, is memories. And memories that we have around the kitchen table are real important. This is so funny, y'all. And some of y'all might not think it's funny, but I thought, I about fell out when I was a kid. My Papa was a Baptist minister. He was straight as an arrow. Never... He would laugh and he liked to tell jokes, but he would never say anything that he really shouldn't. And so, one day, Mama, after church, we were in there and she was making breakfast. No, it wasn't after church. We'd spent the night with him and she was making breakfast. And he was wanting some sugar and cream for his coffee. He said, Maggie, hand me the sugar. And she went, and uh, he said, hand me the cream. And she made a gesture for cream. I'm not going to do it because Chris thinks it's being ugly. But anyway, my papa liked to have died. But my mama was so much fun, y'all. And so it was really mama that did it. And uh, But we laughed as kids and we thought that was so funny. And my papa was so not happy about it. <laughs> But we were little. It was fun. Anyway, it was a memory around the kitchen table that I will never forget. But thanks to my mama for making us laugh that one morning at breakfast. And I just thought it was hilarious. And I'll never forget her sugar and creamer dish that were sitting on the table were these brown bowls with the dark brown tops. And of course, I didn't get these from her. I got these from a thrift store. Stories are fun. Okay, let's let's get us some potato soup in our bowl. Now, this is not how I would eat it because that's just how I am. So, I'm just going to put a little bacon, y'all. <laughs> okay? Because I would eat it the way Mama made it, which is just plain. Um, and then I'm going to put some cheese in it. So, we're going to put a little cheese on it. And let's stir it up and see how it looks. That look good? Yummy. The things that remind us of being a kid and take us back to being in Mama's kitchen or Granny's kitchen or Mama's kitchen. Or, I know there's a lot of men cooks now. Uh, now, when I grew up, none of the men cooked. I'm going to be honest with you. None, none of these southern men cooked, but today they do. My brothers both cook like crazy. Um, and I know men used to cook too, but I'm telling you, the men in my families didn't cook. Did your granddaddies cook, Chris? And Chris's granddaddies didn't cook either. So, um, more power to you, man. Chris knows how to cook good. That's why I took him on the show with us. 
I'm gonna taste it. I'm gonna taste it with this cheese and bacon and see how I like it. Let me get a piece of bacon. Ooh, it's hot. I'm gonna have to sit it back down. That's really good, y'all. Quick, easy, make some. I'll show y'all a trick today on how to thicken the potato soup or how to thicken your chicken and dumplings if for some reason you need to. Um, how to thicken your stews, your roasts, and things like that. Um, of course, you can use cornstarch, and sometimes I do. The recipe that is in my cookbook for um, potato soup actually uses cornstarch. And I've had so many people say, I bet your mama didn't use cornstarch in her potato soup. And you know what? I really don't know if she did or not. I was a kid. But it don't really matter one way or the other. You can use flour. You can use cornstarch. Now, the difference, there's a difference. If you use cornstarch to thicken something, it turns clear. So let's say you're making a clear glaze for the top of a fruit tart or cake. Then you would definitely want to use cornstarch, okay? If you're using um, it to thicken a soup or a stew, you can use um, flour and milk. So it's just according to what you're making and what your preferences are. I have been told, and I believe it kind of, that warming up cornstarch, like if you get it refrigerated, um, it's a little harder to warm it up and it be the same consistency. You usually have to thin it out some compared to using flour and stews and uh, dumplings and stuff like that. Yesterday I made a sponge cake. I'll be putting that on cake lessons um, as soon as I get it edited. My mother, before she passed in her bed, told me how to make her blue ribbon sponge cake. So I will be having that on cake lessons coming up next. And that is another YouTube channel called Cake Lessons. And it's all about my mama and what she taught me how to do with cakes. Y'all have a blessed day and we'll see you next time on Connor Valley Cooks where we cook like mama did. Bye, y'all. Love ya.